Hey, everybody. Well, I'm back in the studio sharing the second half of this Cheviot rug video with you. This is the weaving up of it. And it was a bit of a mess. And it was a little bit of a disappointment in the end. Not totally. But I thought I'd better show you what happened. Now, this is where we ended when I was working on attaching that warp. I think this time at the bottom of my weave, as I'm beginning, in order to get myself a nice solid line down there, I am going to put in um, some fabric instead of yarn because it's just bulkier and I have tons of it and it's long enough. Um, the thing is that you, um, you do finish off that bottom. You have some rows of weaving with this twine first. And um, and then you have to knot it off. So I'm going to have to get this out of there carefully after it's over with. But I think that that might help my bottoms a little bit. So we'll see how this goes. This is another little experiment this time. Okay. I don't like this one little bit. I'm going to show you what I don't like about it. Look at these big old huge V's I still have here. Even after all this fabric. I mean, I know I could do layers of of yarn I still don't think it'd make any difference I think my clumps of yarn are too big especially because I've got gaps in between all of them I think I need to go back and have my double bundles of three so I am going to um, take the fabric out untie my knots go back at least I don't have to re-slay but I'd rather do this now than wish I had done it later because I haven't put all that work into um, spinning in order to have. Okay, let's pop that tension. We'll untie this and give this another go. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Change of plans. <laughs> Boy, doesn't that happen all the time, especially when you're crafting? Well, I'm doing something that I have never done before, and I may never do again. <laughs> I have decided to tie my warp strings directly onto my front stick. And I'm calling this the front stick. Um, anyway, I've always done a lashing method where you have this, I think you saw me do this, you have this string that goes up and catches those knots, those clusters of knots. But um, I decided this time in order to get a tidier look, that I would tie these pairs of warp strings. I'm taking the pair, the slot and the um, hole that go together, and I'm doing a little double overhand knot. Now, <laughs> the issue comes when you have to take a knot at the end. Um, so I don't think I'm, I think I'm gonna start, I may start weaving right there which means I'm going to need these ends, all those ends. And so I'm probably going to have to untie these um, afterward. And I must say, this is quite time consuming. <laughs> but I thought about this. I was like, oh, this is taking so long. But I am not in a hurry anymore. <laughs> Are you there in your life? I have finally arrived at the point where I'm not in a hurry anymore. It doesn't mean I'm never late for things, but I've just decided I'm not. My mother decided this years ago. I would be all in a dither and all in a rush, and she'd say, Mary Catherine, you are not in a hurry. And um, I took that to heart, and now I'm to a point where the children are grown, the children are gone, my husband's at work, and at least when it comes to these... Um, hobbies or I guess you could call it my side business with the soaps and the balms and stuff I'm not gonna be in a hurry and I'm not gonna feel rushed I'm not gonna think oh I have to make a batch of soap today or I have to make some more of this or that or I have to hurry with this weave I'm not gonna hurry with the weave because I want it to turn out well didn't like how it was looking before so I'm starting over with the tying on so, let's see, that one's a little wonky. I think it's nice to get to a time in life 
and you don't have to be in a hurry. It was always my natural tendency to be in a rush. For some reason, I felt like I was being more um, efficient. <laughs> I, I was using time wisely if I was in a hurry. That meant I was maximizing every moment, but I'm, still, I'm not convinced that's true at this point in my life. Well, enough philosophizing. I only got a few of these left. I just want to get the first, it's just like last time I made a rug. I want to get the first few rows in so I can see what it's going to look like. Last time when I did that, I was like, oh, this is so exciting. It looks like, it looks like a rug. <laughs> it looked like what I wanted it to look like. And I'm hoping this time it does the same. As I have looked, I don't know, where did I put it? Oh, here they are. As I've looked at this little bowl of fiber over the weeks, I love the combination of the Cheviot white and um, the Shetland brown. And the Shetland brown just has so much variation of brown color in there. It's just gorgeous. And so, um, anyway, I'm very, very excited to see how they go in together. Okay, well, I'll bring you back. We're almost there. I'm almost ready to start weaving. Can you believe it after all this time? <laughs> all right, I've got a little bit done that I'm going to show you. Um, it's getting on into the afternoon and I've got to go do other things. But I wanted to share with you how this is looking. I love the look of the wool. I like alpaca, which was my last rug. But the wool just has this crinkly, I just love the texture of it. So let's look at it. I did go ahead and put the fabric down there, like I said, and I've been really packing it down with, where's that thing? This little dog comb after every second pass, I go through and just, you know, really squash it down. And that makes a big difference and gives a nice compact texture to the rug. I do love that brown. See how rich it is, but the cream is beautiful as well. And you know, I uh, didn't wash it before I spun it, and you would never know. I really like it. I can't wait to get it done, but for now, I'm going to have to call it quits for the day and go make some dinner. See you tomorrow. My shuttle is very, very full, and it was even fuller when I started uh, this time with it. And that all goes back to how I spun it and where I loaded the brown fleece fiber onto the bobbin um, at the end after the white. And I'm trying to get a, you know, a patch of white and brown followed by a lot of white and get it to be a, a bit of a pattern. I don't want to have any solid black or brown this time. Um, I want it to be a, not a measured pattern, but I do want it to not just be too random. And so that affects how I load these double strands onto the shuttle. And so anyway, I just ended up having a really full shuttle trying to get that brown that's in there. Um, in the bottom and then the other brown that I started with here. It's just a lot of fiber. 
but I think it's possible that I'm going to have enough for this rug. I'm not sure. I may have to spend some more, but I may not. Oh, I should have. You don't think you really need to do this until you do it, and then you realize how compressed it does get. I'm trying to keep it level. It's a little bit lower over here. If it were a, you know, like a real pattern, like a tartan or a houndstooth, you could really see if it wasn't absolutely straight, but this is not quite like that. The shovel is getting slimmer and slimmer, so it's getting easier to pull through. I just love the look of this. I really think I like the look of the wool better than I do the alpaca. There's something about the texture of the fiber itself that I prefer. And I didn't think I would. I thought I would like that soft alpaca, but there's something about this twisty scratchiness of the wool that I really just love. Okay, this is getting pretty close to the top. I'll press it down one more time. It doesn't really work as much in that neutral position. So this is probably about 12 inches total. Now we'll release that gear. Pull this back. Tighten this back up again. And now I have a wider shed here to pass my shuttle through to get the top. Makes it a little easier. You don't want to have to advance your weave too often, but it does give you an easier time when you do. Sometimes I catch it on there. And for those of you who maybe don't weave as much, the reason we keep this at an angle is because you don't want this end, um, really any of it, to be caught already like it might be. If you had it way down here, this would be caught. And then when you pull it down, it would tend to pull your weave in and give you an uneven edge. So I'll make sure that on this end down here, I have a little bit, let me show you, just a little, you always pinch out just a little extra, make sure it has enough to do that without constricting this edge, okay? And then you make sure that this is at a nice angle so that when you pull it down, there's plenty of yarn in there To go in and out. It's not a, it's not going in a straight line. It's very subtly going in and out, and so it takes a little bit more than just the length of this to go through because it's going up and down and up and down around those uh, warp threads. You can feel it. Like when I let go of that, it springs back. Part of that's because it's wool. It springs back a lot. I've even got some little, they're not pigtails, but little crinkly, you know, in here. And I kind of like those in there. They don't really show up as much in the weave as you would think. But if you look closely, you can see them, and they're kind of cute. So I'm about to hit another patch of the brown and white. A rug, because it's shorter than a shawl, 
for um, a scarf is really a much faster weave. You can do a 20 or 24 inch um, rug and it's just in no time. But a lot of long shawls are 70 inches long. Sixty or seventy. Okay. There's really not a lot of brown at the end. That was one disappointment for me, as I thought I had spun more brown at the end of each bobbin, and I, I think the brown was challenging to pick, pick at, and get to the end out and stuff like that. Um, so, because you know the. Chevy at white, I took outside, spread it out, but this again. But the brown I didn't, I just kind of did it here in the studio. Maybe that was my problem. Anyway, I think it'll look fine. Well, it's the moment of truth. It's time to pull it off of this front beam and see how the weave went. Oh, it's short. <laughs> it's shorter than I thought. Well, that's okay. Know what length I thought it was going to be. I told myself I, I was kind of measuring as I went along. I thought it might be more than 20 inches. I don't know that it well, it might be 20 inches. It's wider than it is long, but that's okay. You know, I'm all right with it. I like the look of it though. It might have to be a little bathroom rug. What do you think about that? Okay, well, I've done, um, I did the last little border up here with the warp strings um, as a plain weave and then I did the first knot so I have two more knots to do on here. Now I've shown y'all how to do these knots before on my first rug and that that was a very good video. I'll, I'll put a link to that um, that last video from the previous rug and then I'm going to get this all undone. Um, let me show you what I did down here so you'll understand the craziness of the beginning of this rug. Okay. First of all, I did tie these on, so now I have to untie them all because this is too short. Second of all, I forgot to do this little bit of plain weave in the warp strings down here. So I went back with a needle and painstakingly did about five uh, row, double rows of weaving in there in between the fabric and the fiber. Squeezed it in there. Um, was it a pain? Not really. Did it take time? Yes. Am I in a hurry? No. So I told myself just to enjoy it, and I did. Um, but the thing I probably do regret, I guess, is tying these individually on here, because untying these knots is going to be a pain. I might slip part of fabric out first to take some of the tension off of it so they're easier to unknot. Okay. Well, I'll bring you back later when it's... um looking more like itself. I wish it were about twice that long. I don't know what I was thinking. I need to get better at measuring as I, as I weave, but wow, I like the look of this. Mm -hmm. Kind of nice. So there it is. Nice little rug. Half the size it should be. And I blame myself. But it's still... I've, I really love the look of it. If it was twice as long, it would be perfect. I do like the width. Let me put my little feet on it and you can see. 
Okay, so that's the width. It's perfectly serviceable for a lot of things, so um, we'll find just the right spot for it. It may go underneath my piano bench, and that may be what it's going to be. All right. Thanks, friends.